Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we have another Legends of Frontera video, but this time we're doing something a bit different. In this video, I'm going to show you how I, you know, uh, build my decks. And this video has been requested by a few of you in the comments below. So it was a really a great idea. So thank you so much for actually, you know, commenting on my videos and tell me, telling me what you like to see, because honestly, we're building this channel together. And I just, <laughs> you know, uh, want to create the best content for you guys. So keep commenting and keep letting me know what you would like to see in the future. And yeah, this video will be focused totally about uh, deck building and how I personally build my decks. Now, obviously, you should take into account that, you know, other uh, content creators that build their own decks probably do it differently. I mean, everyone have his own style. I mean, they have their own style. Uh, personally, I think the way I build decks isn't the best because, you know, I'm kind of, I'm relatively new to deck building. I only actually started deck building while playing Legends of Frontera. I never deck built in card games before. Yeah, I know, disgusting. I used to be a filthy de net decker and yeah, what can you do? I mean, you learn, right? You grow. And I'll have to give credit to Mega Mogwai here. He is my inspiration and if you watch my videos for long enough you already know that you can see that we have similar style of even uploading videos and making uh, videos yeah mega mogwai is just you know my inspiration <laughs> yeah. uh, definitely his videos have made so much Im impression on me and he's the first content creator i ever watched that played legends of frontera uh, of course, I watched others, but he was the first and he was the best one still to this day, even though he kind of stopped uploading. Uh, unfortunately, he is, in my opinion, still the best Legends of Runeterra content creator. So much love to him. And yeah, a lot of just the way I deck build and how I approach into deck building comes from his video. So, you know, you should watch his channel if you still want to see some of his old decks. Really, really phenomenal content creator. Now, with that being said, let's actually approach into the deck building process and how I personally do it. So uh, the way I approach deck building is actually by first picking a card I have in mind and then building a deck around it. So usually it's a certain champion or, you know, even a region, but mo most of the time it's a specific card, most likely a champion. This time it's a bit different. This time I want to play one of the new cards that's called Divine Draft. Now, Divine Draft, in case you don't know, it was introduced in the variety patch a few days ago. It's a two mana slow speed spell that says, deal one damage to an enemy or the enemy nexus and deal one to another. This is a P and Z card. Obviously, this is Janna in the background. Uh, you guys let me in the let me know in the comments. Uh, so now I know this is Janna. Uh, pretty cool, actually. Pretty cool for shadowing. I'm I'm really waiting for Janna. She was really cool in League of Legends. I remember back in the day, uh, the Wind Lady, and yeah. So I'm gonna build a deck focusing, you know, with that card in mind. Not focusing like entirely on that card, obviously, because <laughs> it's just a two mana spell. Uh, but still. Really cool card, and I really want to build a deck with this card in it. So that's pretty much settles one region we got, which is P and Z. So now you have one region, you can just basically pick the other region. And now what I like to do is pick a champion. So I look at Divine Draft and I think to myself, okay, this is a two cost spell that pings. Uh, what you can pick that actually goes along with it. The first thing that comes to mind is Seraphim, because she, you know, uh, replicates spells that cost two or less. So, yeah, I mean, it synergizes, right? So I am actually want to make a Seraphim deck. I glance over the other PNZ champions and think to myself, maybe there's something else I want here, but no, no nothing really comes to mind. So Seraphim it is. And now, the moment I know this is a Seraphim deck, the other choices kind of become clearer because Seraphim is, you know, it's a versatile champion, but it's also very limited. So that means she only works in like certain region. I mean, you won't really play Seraphim Demacia, right? It doesn't really make any sense. Uh, so now that we know that, we can 
look over the region and decide what we want to do. Do we want a Bandal City region? What do we feel like? Usually I look for a champion that synergizes with Seraphine. Uh, you can do so by actually picking all the other region you think are good with Seraphine. Let's say Ionia, Targon, Shadow Isles, and let's say Bilgewater and Bandal City. Uh, we can remove Targon. Targon doesn't really work at well. So now that we have all the regions picked that we would like to play with Seraphine, we can go over the champions real quick and decide which one will go best. Uh, I actually don't know, I didn't like rehearse this deck building. This is live, what you're saying, so <laughs> I'm actually building this deck alongside with you. So this is, you know, a, r a real content, not some fake something, some scripted content. Uh, let's think, let's think. Uh, so if there's a champion that completely comes to mind, not really. Okay, not really a champion that can come in mind. So you know what? I'll focus first on a region. I actually want to build a Shadow Isles region just because uh, I already played a Seraphine Builds Rotter deck not too long ago. If you want to check this video, it's really, really cool. I would appreciate that. Uh, so I want Shadow Isles. The reason I want Shadow Isles is not actually for a specific champion, it's actually for the region itself. Uh, I actually want the cheap removal that cost 2 mana, and you know, Shadow Isles is just the king worm remo removal right now. So we will go with Shadow Isles. So now that we decided to pick Shadow Isles as our second region, we're gonna glance over the champions one more, once more. Uh, we got Viego, Senna, mm, Senna, okay, it's pretty nice, and yeah, that's it, Not, nothing else really works. So the only champions that I feel like is going to work with this deck is either Mono Seraphine or a Senna. So I'm not so sure about the Senna, and when I'm not sure about the card, I'm just gonna put one copy of it as a reminder. And now we're gonna pick back PNZ and Senna, remove the champion from the list and th this is why exactly I said the way I deck build isn't probably isn't the best because I know some of you may like to you know go for spells look over everything then select units go over everything then select landmarks go over everything I, I don't do that I just go on every all over any everything at once and yeah this may seem like you know it takes a long time but it really doesn't you you just know the cards when you see them for you know I'm a pretty experienced player and also for you know when I'm an experienced player I think it's good for you to actually see all the cards all at once but maybe I'm just wrong you should do whatever you feel more comfortable to you if you want to use this you know to select card types specifically you should go for it if it's more comfortable for you personally I like to do it all at once so uh, first, before we actually start uh, picking cards, we just need to think about what our decks wants to do. Now, our deck is a Seraphine deck, as you can see. So, Seraphine, you already know. You need to play new spells. Because you see, her level up condition is you've played 9 plus new spells. So that means we can't really put 3 copies of every spell into our deck, but we can play similar cards, so it still counts uh, to, towards her level up, and you still gain pretty much the same effect. And I'm going to show you in, a re in you know, future picks and what I exactly I'm talking about. So with that being said, let's actually go through the cards. Uh, <clears throat> and we're gonna stop to think what we actually want now. Okay, again, as I said, if I see something that glances, you know, that catches my eye, I put one copy and I think about it later. So Acorn, let's put one. Let's go over the cards real quick. Yeah, for Chief 100% stays. Uh, we'll put one for now. Quietus can be good. Uh, Piltor Telstones can be nice. <clears throat> no, no, nope. Uh, Sister Sentry can be nice. Let's see. Maybe Advanced Intel. Encore for sure. Pharaoh's Financier. Uh, I don't think. Not really as good. But maybe we'll put one copy. We'll think about it later. Again, you don't need to be stuck on everything. Uh, Glimpse Beyond Shore, High Note, yep. Uh, Flashbomb Peddler can be nice. 
and inspired plans. No, no, no. Mystic shot, of course. Rummage, yes, indeed. Uh huh. Soul harvest, yep. Let's see. Time trick. Aftershocks. <clears throat> Again, just looking for stuff that catches my eye. And some of the stuff is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, if you played Seraphine decks, you should already know. Uh-huh. Uh, some fumes seems pretty interesting. Uh. Da -na -na -na. Again, just quickly looking over every card. Now, you just need to remember, I know every single card by heart, so it may text you. If you are new to deck building and you're kind of new to Legends of Frontera and you don't know all the cards, you should stop to actually read them. Uh, very, very important. Personally, I know all of the cards, so it takes me a bit quicker to actually... I, mean, I can do this a bit faster, I mean. Ooh, Pursuit of Perfection. That's maybe interesting. Maybe we'll put one in the deck. Uh-huh. Let's see. Formula, of course. Ooh, Dawning Shadows. This was actually... Actually buffed. I forgot about that. Okay. Not really something comes to mind here. Okay. Now, okay. Vengeance is a good example, actually. Let's do this again. So, as you see, I took three copies of Vengeance. Reason is, I when I know a card is gonna be three copies of, I just put three copies. If that card, like, is gigabusted and really good, like Vengeance, you always put three copies of it. So, I can put three copies. If I'm not sure, I only put one. Okay, uh, Sputtering Song Spinner, that's one. Uh-huh. <clears throat> the Zon Diva, what does she do again? Uh, deal one damage to all enemies. If you play six spells in your spells this game, three, three, deal three instead. I actually don't know. Let's put one copy. Reanation, Erring, and Utter Devastation. Okay, so that's pretty much everything. Now, I kind of remembered I can put Caitlyn in this deck. I'm actually not so sure about Caitlyn. So we do need to wait because I don't really sure I want to put Caitlyn in my deck yet. So I actually will wait and see. So this is the first build of the deck. This is basically the skeleton, what I call it. So this is how, you know, you approach deck, you know, I approach deck building. I put one copy of each card I'm interested in and three copies of cards I know they're gonna be in my deck. So yeah, uh, let's actually go over the cards. So what do we have here? We need one drops, right? Obviously. So we have two contenders. Do we have the Acorn and we have the Forge Chief? So obviously Acorn is really great card. It's elusive, you know, opponent really need to ping it to actually deal with it. And Forge Chief is also in pingable range, but it's also susceptible to a blocking unit. So we kind of want to think, what do we need to most? And the Acorn actually reduces the cost of the most expensive spell in your hand by one, while the four chiefs give you one spell mana straight up, which is way more versatile and it's way better. So in this case, I'm gonna put three copies of the four chief over the Acorn. Of course, you can put one Acorn and two four chief if you really feel like it, but I don't like the inconsistency. I, I find four chief to be way better than Acorn. So we're gonna put Acorn. Now, built over tailstones, I'm not that sure about it quite yet, so we're gonna skip over it. Same with the Quietus and the Advanced Anthel. I need to think about it because it's a card draw. Uh, now, we do want two drops, so we actually go over the two drops again. Do we have only Sisla Sentry as a nice option, or do we have something else? We have the Pharaoh's Financier, that's true. And the Flash Bomb Peddlers. Okay, so we have three contenders we picked. We got the Flash Bomb Peddler, and we have the Ferris Financier, and as I said, we got the Sisla Sentry. So I don't think this deck lacks card draw, so I'm gonna remove the Sisla Sentry. Ferris Financier is great. I always like to see it. I mean, manifesting a six plus, yeah, I mean, a six plus uh, cost spell, I mean, that's great. That's a new spell, technically. 
So you know what, I'm going to pick the Pharos over the Flesh Bomb Peddler. And now that I removed the Flesh Bomb Peddler, and I mean, no, I don't want Caitlyn, I want this deck to be Mono Seraphine. I'm actually gonna take out the Advanced Intel. Uh, and we'll, you know, we'll use other card draw, we don't need the Advanced Intel that much. Uh, Divine Draft, of course, we need two copies, not three, because, you know, with Seraphine deck, Uncar Encore, we want two, because it's a really great card, but you don't want three. Uh, Glimpse Weyand, we'll sit on it. Mystic Shot, we want three copies always, card Giga Busted. And High Note, we want only two, because you already have three Mystic Shot, but the two High Notes as a backup always good. Uh, rummaging, I always like putting one, personally, because, uh, you know, sometimes you, the cards in hand, you know, not really fitting. Maybe you're against aggro and you don't want your higher cross cards. So, yeah, rum one Rummage is good. Also, you can replicate it with Seraphine and gain some tons of card draw. Uh, Soul Harvest, three copies, card, best card in the game. Uh, time Trick, let's keep one for now. Aftershock, now, usually I put three. Now, maybe I'll put two because there aren't many Vaults of Nessus deck running around, around right now because it got massively nerfed. Uh, we'll put two, maybe we'll tweak this later. Uh, Piltover and Peacemaker can go, some Pumes can play, Augment and Clockling, that's definitely more than one copy. Uh, Caustic Rift is also pretty nice. Uh, do we keep the Pursuit of Perfection? If you play two uh, new cards, it's going to sound a catastrophe. Uh, yeah, we'll keep one. I mean, it's a fun card. Uh, Senna. About the Senna. Uh, Senna, Senna, Senna. What does she do when she level up? She gives everything cheaper. Accelerate to fast speed. That's really good. That's really good. We're gonna skip over to Senna for now. Maybe we will put Senna. That's interesting. I need, I need to think about that. So we'll think about the Senna. Uh, formula. Let's put two copies for now. Hexbliterator. Two copies because we already got three Vengeance. Back Alley Bar and Sputtering Song Spinner definitely stays the way it is. You don't need three Back Alley Bar. Uh, reason is aggro again. Uh, if we feel like we actually want one more back alley bar, we'll put one more. That's totally fine. Again, this is the first build of the deck. The, you need to constantly remember, the first build of a deck you're going to do is 100% likely to change after a few games. Because you know you test the deck and you realize uh, and you understand what's wrong with it. So yeah, deck testing, always important. Always, always, always. A uh, Dizon Diva, uh, a board, you know, essentially a board clear, but it's it just costs too much. It's not really worth it in this meta, so I'll cut her out. So, uh, about the Senna, I don't feel like it's that important, so I'm gonna cut one. You know, the one copy we put in earlier. And, of course, we have three loose cards, so we kinda need to close and wrap this deck up. Uh, Caustic Rift. Do I flow constantly with this deck? Probably. Uh, is dealing one damage to all the enemies that good? Eh, I don't know. I don't think so. I think we have enough removal. I don't think we need a Caustic Rift. Some Pumes, if you added plus two cards and deal three instead. I mean, that can be kind of nice, but I mean, is it really that necessary? I actually don't know. Uh, the Glimpse Beyond can go because we don't have many units to kill. And I actually like the two Aftershock into the Piltoven Tailstone, so you know what? Uh, because you can Piltoven Tailstone into Aftershock, so I'm just gonna keep it this way. One copy of Quietus, maybe instead of one copy of Soul Harvest, we're gonna keep one copy of Quietus for the versatility. Ah, uh, but actually Soul Harvest is so good. I mean, we can take out one Soul Harvest and we can take out the Quietus, that's in my opinion the best. Let's actually look at the stats here. Um, 28 spells, 11 units. Whew, we are really cheap on units. We are really low on units. So, okay, you know what? Maybe I actually will play Caitlyn in this deck. That's interesting. That's interesting. So, Quietus or one copy of Soul Harvest, gotta go. I don't think this deck have too much difficulty to level up the Seraphine that I need a Quietus as much. I, I just, I really don't want to take out Soul Harvest. It's literally the best spell in the game. So I'll just cut the Quietus. And okay, now we have essentially a full deck. Uh, do we miss card draw? That's what I like to check at the end. Do we miss card draw? So we have two formulas. We have 
uh, two augmented clockling and one time trick and one rummage. Uh, a lot of generation in this deck also. I don't think we miss Cardra that much. And again, we're gonna deck test, and if we actually miss Cardra, I'll actually more than be happy to add another rummage. And you know what? Why not even add one rummage now? I, maybe, maybe I can cut something and add a rummage. Um, I don't want to cut a unit. I'm really lacking in units. So let's see what I have. I have pings, right? I have a lot of pings. Well, pings are really good. Ah, you know what? I'm I'm gonna cut the sump fumes. I have a lot of pings. I don't I don't need the sump fumes. And let's add another rummage just for the card draw. And maybe if I get some you know expensive card that I cannot play that isn't useful to me. Also, it can get rid of the pursuit of perfection. Um. So yeah, pretty good. So you know what? We'll not. Uh, maybe we'll add a Caitlyn. That's the only thing I'm actually thinking about. This deck is pretty much complete as the first build. Do I put a Caitlyn as a 3-drop? I mean, it's a really solid... I really like Caitlyn. It also forces a removal out of the opponent. I'll kind of have to think about that. You know what? I, I actually think this build is fine for a first build. If I feel like Caitlyn is necessary, I'll again test this deck, see which card works and which cards doesn't. I'll maybe add a Caitlyn. But this is actually the first build of the deck. So we'll just give it a name for now. We'll call it Test 1 because we're still testing. And yes, that's pretty much how I approach deck building in Legends of Runeterra. So you just need to remember that other content creators are 100% doing it differently the way I do it. Everyone have their own style and I'm sure you will develop your own style of deck building once you get into it. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and actually commenting on my videos and letting me know you want to actually watch this type of content. It was a super fun video to make and a good change of pace every now and then. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.